Um, now we'll be hearing a talk by Florian Streibelt from TU Berlin, and he'll be talking about illegitimate IP addresses at Internet Exchange Points. Please give him a hand. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for letting me speak here. Um, I will be presenting joint work with uh, Franziska Lichtblau, Philipp Richter and Anja Feldmann. And we were looking at um, the exchange points and specifically at some strange uh, IP addresses we saw at the, at the source uh, address field. So what are illegitimate source IP addresses? In our case, it's uh, all packets with source addresses that are not valid within the scope of the public internet. Um, what do we see here? Of course, intentionally spoofed traffic for you know, service attacks. We all know this from DNS and NTP amplification attacks. Then we see internal traffic that is leaked by mistake because of misconfiguration of equipment. Um, usually uh, some masquerading or netting going wrong. Or we see a general misconfiguration. So people not being able to handle their stuff co correctly. Why should we look at this kind of traffic? Well, first of all, I already mentioned that uh, we see a lot of attack attack traffic in, in, these, in these data packets. Um, all of the recent denial of service attacks were distributed denial of service attacks with often using spoofed addresses for DNS or NTP amplification attacks. And this is a, th a thing that we all noticed two weeks ago is a huge problem still in the internet. Um, by studying this unwanted traffic, we hope that we get some insights and can come up with some mitigation strategies. This, this means if we are able to to understand what kind of traffic this is, we can probably or hopefully identify the sources of this traffic. If you look at the internet um, today, you cannot see who is sourcing this traffic because as at, at the second or third hop, when it uh, transits some AS, you cannot be sure what peer was uh, inserting this traffic somewhere upstream um, in, your, in your AS path. And third, um, this kind of traffic can expose some internal infrastructure information. Um, if you see some uh, firewall not blocking RFC 1918 address space, you leak all of this address space to the outside world, um, maybe even including some uh, sensitive data in, in some UDP packets that you send out. And finally, a thing that some people start noticing is, well, of course, this costs bandwidth, and bandwidth does not come for free anymore. Um, we have one problem here. If you do not filter this kind of traffic, it's usually not your bandwidth that you're wasting. It's the bandwidth of the other people that are affected by the null of service attacks. So what we did is um, we found some categories. Um, I think you should be uh, familiar with most of them. We have the big class of Bogan IP addresses. It's RFC 1918. It's the Yana reserved multicast future use, um, all this kind of stuff from the RFCs. Then we have a whole uh, lot of IP addresses or network prefixes that are still not announced on the internet, either because they are not yet assigned or because they are just not announced. Um, and then we have something that we call invalid traffic. And that's the, the main thing that we, we will be talking about in, or I will be talking about in the, in the rest of the talk. Um, this is all traffic that we see in a network that originates from some peer that is not responsible for this address space. Uh, who of you knows BCP38? I hope everybody. Okay. BCP38 is, first of all, the document by the ITF, the best current practice, number 38. Uh, the full title is Network Ingress Filtering, Defeating Denial of Service Text with Employ, which employ IP source address spoofing. Um, this is what I mentioned now, I think, 1,000 times. People are using forged source IP addresses to uh, redirect return traffic from amplification attacks to some victim. And the idea of this document is if everybody on the internet, which is very hard, would employ filters on their networks, so only address space that is being used internally can be used to source uh, addresses or source traffic, and you do not allow some other IP space being, um, yeah, being sourced from your network, we all would live in a happier world. In other words, this means if you're an ISP and you are creating, aggregating routing announcements for multiple downstream networks, you have to employ strict traffic filtering um, so that you do not source traffic from any announcements that are not made by you or your customers, your downstreams. Sounds easy, right? So why is not everybody doing that? 
Um, what we do in contrast to other uh, studies is um, we do a passive uh, approach. We, we are looking at some flow data. Um, other projects like the spoofer project are sending probes. That means they are spoofing addresses, send traffic to their, um, to their um, sensors, and if the packets arrive there, they know that the network that they originated this, this probe from is vulnerable to spoofing. And what we did, as I said, is a passive approach. We are looking at flow data, and we want to get insight on this the, the traffic volume and the characteristics of this traffic. So what do we do for that? We look at the traffic and cluster all packets in our categories that I mentioned. The first category is, of course, Borgon. It's the easiest category. You have fixed address lists like RFC 1918, multicast, YANA, and, and so on. And all traffic with a source address within these network ranges uh, we call is Borgon traffic. This is straightforward. Uh, the second thing is unrouted. Um, this category consists of all prefixes that are not known on any route collector. So we are using uh, RIS and RIP, view, RIS, RIP on, and route views. Use all of the BGP dumps that are available from, uh, from the time frame that we are looking at. Uh, use all of the updates and whenever a prefix is announced there or is part of the routing table, um, we use this prefix and say it is announced somewhere on the internet. Of course, we filter out everything larger than slash 8 and smaller than slash 24. Um, This means, yes, we do not detect BGP hijacking, but this is not part of our work. We just want to see a set a lower bound um, for this kind of traffic. And everything that is not in, this, in these known prefixes is unrouted. Um, we try to utilize as many data sources as possible. I said we also include all the updates. Um, and we use the Camry team, uh, the Camry list from the Bogon and Martian prefixes. Uh, by the way, you can use these lists that they provide to configure your routers. Um, they have pre-compiled lists for that. Now, how does this IP space now look? We have our Bogon prefixes. Um, it's 2.3 million slash 24s. That's 14% of the IPv4 space. Yes, we only look at IPv4 currently. Uh, we plan to do v6, but before it's sufficient for, the, for this purpose right now. Um, and then we have all of the unrouted prefixes. Well, we have 78% of the IPv4 address space being announced. This leads uh, us to 3.16 million unrounded slash 24s. And if you look at the, at the plot down there, um, it's pretty clear we have a still large amounts of IP space that is unrouted in Bogon. OK, this is a textbook example for some routing infrastructure. Um, nothing fancy. ASA is, of course, announcing its prefixes. And when ASA is sending traffic to the internet, um, this is the, the core idea of BCP38. If you announce your prefix, you are also a valid sender for all of the IP addresses within that prefix. In our case, ASA is announcing prefixes P1, P2, P3. And what we do is we construct a list that ASR is, ASA is um, a valid sender also for all of these three prefixes that it is announcing to its members, uh, to its neighbors. Sorry. What happens now if some downstream ASs are sourcing traffic uh, via ASA? Of course, um, we would see this as spoofing because we have not yet looked at the announcements from them. But because AS, B, C, and D are announcing their prefixes to the upstream ASA, we can construct that list too. So we add all of the downstream prefixes to ASA as well. Whenever we see an AS on the AS path from any entry in the BGP routing table, we consider all of the prefixes of all ASs valid for these ASs. So even if ASD would peer somewhere else, um, it would still be, and, and not announce all of its prefixes via A, we would catch all of these prefixes to be also um, valid for ASA. Now, when we see traffic originating at ASA um, from a prefix that's not in the list, this is invalid traffic. So far, nothing fancy. What are our limitations? I'm, I'm a researcher. Um, I'm a scientist. Of course, I have limitations. Um, we have a lot of false positives um, because we cannot get a full picture of the complete BGP state. 
Um, nobody can. We are using all of the BGP um, routing, um, routing collectors that we, are, we have access to, but you cannot capture a, a complete a picture. And we do not see all of the private interconnects. So if some ASs have a private peering somewhere via a cable in data center or, or a tunnel or whatever, we will not see this, this peering. Um, this will lead to false positives. Some of them we were able to, to uh, find out what, what happens there. Um, but in general, when we look at the traffic, we will see that later uh, we can be pretty, pretty sure what kind of traffic is in fact uh, spoofed because the characteristics are really clear. Um, and we will get false negatives. That means some ASs that we say are a valid source for traffic that are not because they are somewhere on the AS path, because they share a transit or whatever. Um, in principle, this would be legitimate if some of the transit AS would insert traffic there, but we can live with that. Um, the whole process is completely offline, so um, we have to pre-aggregate all of this routing data, we have to calculate a lot, we, this, this needs a lot of memory, so this is an offline process. Once the list is ready, we can apply the flow data um, to this list. And that's what we did. We, uh, we are collaborating with a large European IXP, and we were uh, using the, the metadata, the source IP address um, of the flow data, and matched this to, against our categories. Uh, the IXP has more than 700 members, a lot of traffic, and we looked at five weeks of IP fix data from uh, January to February this year. Um, and yes, we only considered IPv4. Um, we looked at sampled traffic because a full take would be too much. Um, so um, we have to be careful with, with some of the data because we have some, some mis-sampling with small numbers. But again, for our, for our uh, purpose, this is completely fine. Now let's look at the numbers. Um, if you look at the percentages, this is really, really small, you would say. We have less than, uh, than 1% of, of invalid traffic and unrouted in Bogon but the total number is huge. It's 610 terabytes of traffic, and this is the traffic that would be used if it's all uh, in an amplification attack. This is the unamplified uh, traffic. So if you would imagine that this is all being used for an amplification attack, you have to multiply this with the usual amplification um, factors, and then you get a picture. Now, how does this traffic look? Um, in the upper part, you see the, the red bar. This is all traffic, so the total traffic on the IXP. And what you can see is that in our RFC 19 address space, uh, as source IP address in TCP, we also have a day and night pattern. Um, so we think that this is some end user equipment as it's being turned on and turned off uh, on a daily basis, and where just some masquerading and netting is not correctly configured. Um, then we see um, the other traffic patterns, and if you look at the, at the um, invalid, you see some spiky stuff going on here. Also a little bit of day and night pattern, but from time to time we see some spikes. So this is some indication that this is uh, indeed some spoof traffic. And this gets even clearer if you look at the UDP port ports. Um, this is regular UDP traffic. Uh, you see the first 10% of UDP ports uh, sorted by traffic amount. We see a lot of port 4444. Then we have uh, HTTPS on UDP. I suspect this is speedy or something. Um, we have Steam and some other known ports like DNS right here. And what you don't see is NTP. If we look at our invalid traffic, this is completely different. Here you see the first, zero dot, the first 3% of tra traffic. And UDP port 53 and 123 dominate everything. So this is the first, the first 10 percent. They are here. Um, this is this is really huge, and we can be pretty sure that this is spoof traffic used for attacks. Again, you see the, the difference. What we also see is that only three members at the IXP are contributing 80% of this invalid traffic. So we have three members that are not filtering, and they have 80% of this traffic. Um, this means everybody counts. So if somebody is not filtering, 
this, this member or this AS or this network can be used for attacks. And if this one is filtering, the attackers will find another network. And then we have this cyber thing going on again. Um, <coughs> now, if we look at the, the type of members that are emitting this traffic, we also find some interesting uh, insights. On the x-axis down here, you see the traffic volume of the member in, in TCP, uh, the total traffic. So on the right, you see members that have a lot of traffic on their, on their networks. And here we have members that don't have a lot of traffic. And on the y-axis, you see the amount of unwanted traffic that we see. Um, we sorted all of the members mainly manually in categories. Uh, so our 700 members are some network service providers, hosting providers, content providers, ISPs, nonprofit organizations, and others. And what we see here is that some members have a lot of regular traffic, but no of the invalid traffic. We also see some smaller members that have a lot of invalid traffic. What does it tell us? Well, it does tell us that the majority does not leak anything. That's a good thing. So a lot of people are filtering. It also tells us that because we see a lot of TCP um, as in here, it's misconfigured net. And we see it's mostly low traffic ISPs and very small hosters that have this problem. So the big ones aren't a problem. They are doing proper filtering. And this is, this is one thing that we learned. Everybody was telling us, well, you can't do BCP38 in big networks. It's so complicated. Apparently, it's not. And if we look at the other uh, categories, unrotted and invalid, uh, we see that this is harder to filter. Um, if we, if we rem remember again, uh, Bogon um, was very easy to filter. We go back here, it's a static list, basically. You have RFC 1918. Um, for unrouted and invalid, this looks a bit different. Uh, we get a lot more traffic that is unwanted than in the previous picture, but still, the big members don't have the problem. Here we have some medium members that get into trouble. Um, so, what do we conclude? Network ingress filtering is not yet deployed everywhere. It should. So, if you are not doing this, please look into BCP38. It's not hard to set up. There is a lot of documentation out there, and I think even a wiki explaining things. The larger networks are doing the things correctly right now. Um, this shows us that even if your network is large and you have a lot of traffic and your network is complicated, you can still do this. Many small networks still lack proper filtering. And we don't know why this is the case. We can only suspect that maybe there is not enough know-how for that or they don't have the manpower or they are just not interested. Because to, to see the, the effects, you have to be victim of a DDoS attack. Um, as long as you have not experienced that, you do not consider this important, apparently. Because it's always the others that have to have the problem dealing with the traffic, not the person that is not filtering. And we only lo also learned that a small amount of members can be really a problem that are not doing the filtering correctly. So this is the message um, that I, as a researcher, want you to tell you as operators. Please continue to educate the people out there um, to do proper filtering, and friends do not let other friends send unfiltered traffic or something. I don't know. Please educate your, your peers, your, the people you're appearing with, tell them what the problem is, and look into the traffic. If you see RFC 1918 addresses on your, your peering links, tell the people that they should stop that. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, I'm open for questions, I think. Okay, then. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.